Hello and thanks for joining us. My name is David Hall, Product Manager with National Instruments. Today we're going to give you a brief demonstration of a 2x2 MIMO instrument setup. Now to explain what, what the hardware I have in front of me is, is I have a two-channel vector signal generator. Now these, this two-channel vector signal generator produces phase coherent outputs by means of a shared local oscillator between each modulator. I also have a phase coherent two-channel vector signal analyzer and my generators and analyzers are configured in loopback mode to one another. We can see these two cables. I have channel one of my generator going to channel one of my analyzer, and then channel two is the same way. So with these two modules set up in loopback mode, we can look in lab view at some of the phase characteristics between each of the two channels. Now the first graph I'm going to show is simply the frequency domain of what's being generated by each of the vector signal generators. Now you can see on the graph I'm basically generating just a single tone CW at 1 gigahertz. And you can see those uh, the same. One other way that we can visualize this, this is going to be a little tricky to see, is to add a frequency offset between my generator and analyzer. When I do that, you'll see my tone subtly shift to the left, to the right, or to the left by just a few hundred hertz uh, by applying this frequency offset. I'll put that back to zero. But this will be important later on. Now one way to verify that these two CW signals are indeed phase coherent is to look at the time domain by visualizing uh, and doing some uh, DSP on the I and Q samples. So next we're going to click over to the time domain. Now what these three graphs show is the baseband I versus time for each of the two channels, Q versus time for each of the two channels, and then the phase component of each I and Q sample of between each of the two channels. Again, these are phase coherent, so the two graphs are basically overlapping to one another. Now one way we can uh, visualize the phase coherency is to imply impairments to our two vector signal generators. The first thing we're going to do is add a frequency offset. When we add a frequency offset, uh, the frequency information of both I and Q versus time is equivalent to the frequency offset between my two channels. Again, I've applied a 200 hertz frequency offset. That means that the frequency of this sinusoid right here is exactly 200 hertz. Again, they're still overlapping. So what I'm going to do is apply a phase shift to the first channel by vector signal generator so that we can visualize those in the time domain. So here I'll click on my channel zero, or channel one phase offset. And then you can see as I apply a phase offset, you see the red line shift over in time. You can see that there. So with a zero hertz offset, they're overlapping, and I can apply in this graph up to a 180 degree phase offset. Now one other graph to point out is this phase versus time. Because I've applied a frequency offset, I see that on a sample by sample basis, my phase offset is increasing over time. A frequency offset is a basically a phase versus time shift. Also, I see this discrete time delay between my red and blue traces. Again illustrating that the phase offset between each channel is constant over time. A second way that we can visualize this is in the Cartesian domain where we're looking at polar coordinates. Again, when we look at the Cartesian domain, every series of samples has both a magnitude and a phase. Here we can see the magnitude and the phase is zero. Also, because I've removed my frequency offset between two channels, each point in my acquisition overlays on one another. The way that we can see these shift is to apply a frequency offset. When I apply a frequency offset, even of a few hertz, we can see that on a sample by sample basis, the phase of each sample is increasing over time. Now that I've applied the frequency offset, I'm going to apply a phase offset as well. When I do that, you can see that I'm adjusting the phase of each vector signal generator. Again, because my vector signal analyzers are phase coherent, I can perform this type of measurement. Now one final uh, demonstration that we'll show is the precise phase relationship between each channel. I'm going to calibrate out any phase offset and then go to this phase difference display. Now here, all we're doing is taking the phase component of each record on a channel by channel basis and subtracting out the offset to measure the phase difference between the two channels. This gives you an idea of exactly how phase coherent each channel can be. And again, you can see on the graph that we have a phase offset of about plus or minus 0.1 degree. In addition, 
we can also measure both the mean and the standard deviation of this offset over time. If we look at the standard deviation, it's less than 0.03 degrees on a point-by-point -point basis for this whole record. Also, the mean offset is about uh, 0.01 degrees uh, for this entire acquisition. So again, I hope this gives you a little more information about how to measure phase coherency in a two-channel vector signal generator and analyzer system. For more information, please visit ni.com slash rf.